time for a special announcement. As some of you might know, Chips Challenge 2, after 25 years since the original game's release, is finally being released on Steam at the end of May. That's right, this is a childhood dream come true, everybody, and I am so looking forward to it. And I thought, before we start this Let's Play, I would just let you all know in a special mini channel update that I will be playing it completely blind on release day. So be sure to look forward to that. I should be done with Nancy Drew's Sea of Darkness and this Let's Play by then. So I just wanted to just get that out there because I am so excited about this game. I mean, you have no idea. I've been waiting for this since I was like 10. I mean, it's going to be so amazing. So I'll probably be posting a separate video on the channel detailing some of my thoughts on that and um, some of my... Uh, ideas of what the game is going to have and my thoughts on the various game elements in a separate video, but this video is going to be dedicated to this new Let's Play on the other 100 tiles. This level set for Chips Challenge 1 is a sequel to the set Pit of 100 Tiles, which I had LP'd on the channel uh, quite a while back, and it's also designed by Andrew Menzies. Now, I'm going to be referencing that set and that Let's Play throughout this one, so if you have not seen that Let's Play, please go back and watch it first before watching this one. Otherwise, you might be a little confused. I, mean, I suppose you could watch this one, you know, even if you didn't see it, but it wouldn't be quite as meaningful. Um, other than that, I've actually play-tested this set and have optimized most of it, which is why you see a, a best time in the upper right-hand corner there. I'm not going to be showing off my optimized solutions, mainly just because I don't really remember a lot of them, and I probably won't be able to execute them here in the Let's Play um, very well, and I do want to play it safe and not die a bunch, so I'm just going to be playing through the levels very casually, and of course providing some commentary, except this time, since this is going to be a non-blind Let's Play, I'm going to be giving some of my thoughts about the levels and what went into the design process um, as we were going through them, since I was kind of involved with um, what Andrew was going through when it came to some of these levels as he designed them, and uh, as I gave him feedback on some of the designs, and what it was like to play test them, of course. I, I will be talking about that. So anyway, let's get started with a slightly more complicated maze. As uh, you might be able to guess, this is a sequel to a mostly simple maze from, oops, I didn't turn the sound on, there we go, from the uh, uh, Pit of 100 tile set, except unlike this one, you actually have to collect everything. Um, in the original, you only had to go through and collect um, a few of the items in order to exit, and in this one, you had to get everything, so that's kind of cool. There's also some slightly more complicated traps as well. Well, maybe not traps, but, you know, obstacles is probably the better term. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun level. Um, I do like this thin wall design. I, th I think it's pretty cool. I, I think it's a good example of how to integrate thin walls into a maze if you don't have thin walls throughout your maze. So that, that's always neat. And down here we get a nice little block pushing puzzle. Of course, what I just did there you could never do in links, but uh, it's still pretty fun. Let's see here. We got some fireball dodging action get these, and I think I missed some chips down here, so let's go back. I do like how this level is very open-ended in the sense that you can approach most of it from any order. There's really no um, specific order that you have to do everything in, although there is at least just one order that I'm aware of that uh, is required for the bold time. And here we get a nice glider um, dodging area. And there's one more ship in the passage that leads, the other passage that leads to the fireball room. Alright, so now for the northeast section, we get some tank action. Sorry if my voice is kind of a little hoarse today. I was in Houston all day yesterday with a bunch of screaming kids um, going to the Space Center, which was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I was there about four or five years ago. And I, I really love the Space Center a lot. I think it's just amazing. They got a nice little museum there that's great for the kids. And the tours of the actual Space Center part of the Space Center are really neat as well. All right, so we are done with level one. That totally rhymed. All right, let's move on to level two, Gravity Falls. This level is meant to just be a simple um, force floor navigation level. And I totally messed that up. Way to go. 
I'm probably just going to do this in a random order. I was going to try to do it in the order that I do it in for uh, the optimized time, but I guess that's not working out. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's go this way. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to tr even try to get optimal times on most of these, although you know, I will try to go through this set pretty quickly since it's not exactly the most difficult set ever, although it is more difficult than its predecessor. I should mention that. Uh, this way. I knew there was one I was missing, I just couldn't remember. Oh, wait, I was supposed to go up there, wasn't I? Okay, let's try that again. There we go. I'm always so bad with exiting, like, sidestepping force floors in tower links. Like, it's so, yeah, it's so silly. Like, you have to do it one move ahead of time, or, like, one half move ahead of time, I should say. Oops, that was dumb. Okay, go through the teleport the other way. It's been a while since I've really played this. There we go. Alright, Mortified. Now, this is a really interesting level because this is a follow up to Brickwald from the original set. Uh, you guys might remember Brickwald. It, well, actually, there's two le Brickwald levels there's Brickwald and there's Brickwald again. And both of them kind of had this mortar pattern. But in this level, we're actually doing the inverse of that. Like, we're going inside the mortar instead of the actual bricks, which is kind of a cool concept. Um, oh, we missed one there. I think I have to get this one first. Let's do that before we move on. I don't know if there's anything this way. This is one of those levels I just kind of quickly looked over to optimize and then just never really played again. Oh, and there's a chip where you actually have to get it in the ball path. That's, that's different from most of the other ones. Alright, I think we can proceed onward now. So every time I hear the, the term onward, I always think of this thing that one of my friends did when uh, we were kind of in late high school. He was taking dual credit classes at a local college, and we decided to make this movie on campus. It was a really silly movie. It was called The Hero Factor. And basically, it was kind of a send-up to, like, superhero movies, even though there really weren't too many superhero movies out yet. I mean, we're, we're talking about, like, 2005. This is before Marvel really started building their cinematic universe. But he wanted to have this movie where, like, all the characters were named their parts. Like, there would be a hero named Hero, and a villain named Villain, and a sidekick named Sidekick, and so on. And it was a really fun project. Like, I thought the idea of it was really clever. Okay, so maybe it wasn't the most clever thing, but it was really fun, and we had a blast just making it. And I'm not sure where the rest of the chips are. Here they are. Okay, good. Anyway, um, for whatever reason, the guy who played Hero, I was sidekick, by the way, I, I should mention. Um, the guy who played Hero in one scene after this fight with this random character called Subplot, get it? Um, he decided to lead the pack uh, out the, uh, the door, and he said, let's hack! Onward! And I, I have no idea what he was going to say. Like, let's hat. Like, like, he interrupted himself and just said onward. It just sounded so weird. And we never really figured out why he did that. It was the strangest thing. Anyway, Pluto is the next level. Uh, let's see here. I This was in CCLP1, by the way. Worth mentioning. And I just totally went back there, even though I didn't need to. Yep, I'm definitely not getting the bull time here. But that's all right. We're we're not we're not aiming for that. I'm just so used to optimizing. It's I'm having to get out of that for the let's play. It's just one of those things I'm having to um to remember as I'm going through this. This is I think this is the path to the exit. You know what? I'm not going to get that red key. I'm going to try to see if I can do this the slightly busted way. Okay, and that's that. So let's go over here first to get this stuff. Get our blue key. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry if this kind of feels a little familiar, but uh, like I'm not really commenting on it too much. And it's mainly because I played it so much in CCLP1, but it's a good level. Like I really like this design a lot. I think it's really clever. It kind of reminds me of Elite from CCLP3, except I think more interesting. I'm talking about like the opening room of Elite, uh, where you have all that ice and you have all those crossing paths. Like I think it's really cool, and I think the level uses it very well. Also, the idea of having the exit in the middle, surrounded by blue walls, genius. I, I just love that concept. 
Although, I wonder if there's a way to do it without having to use the blue walls. I, I haven't really checked that, but I think it's good that they're there. I, I think that's that's clever. Also, it prevents people from even trying and wasting time, so I guess that is something. Alright, so I'm going to try to see if I can remember the exact pattern that I need to take here in order to do this. Let's see. Is this it? No. Oh, bummer. Now I'm... Oh, you've got to be kidding, right? Okay, come on. Let, let, let's do this. Oh, really? We're, we're, we're going to get this, guys. We're, we're going to get it. No! <laughs> we're stuck. Okay, let, let's not do that. We'll, we'll do it the safe way. All right, so we can get that chip there, even without waiting. Um, oh, we, we need that key, don't we? Yeah, I, I shouldn't be trying risky stuff like that. This is like a casual let's play. I'm having to get used to that that idea. Also, the the stream of gliders on the outside. I think that's a really nice touch. I think that's that's cool. I haven't mentioned that yet, but I think it is cool. So let's go here and get the red key first. And I can't make that. We'll have to wait for the bugs. One of the things that I really like about this set um, is that it's very good ab about introducing new ideas to the game. Like, Andrew really starts experimenting with some crazy stuff in this set. But I do appreciate levels like this that take something familiar in this game and turn it into something um, different, you know, with, with a new take on this, the, the whole idea. I, I think that's really clever when, when people do that. Also, um, I think I just remembered, you have to wait one move, not three moves, if you're to do that, uh, that shortcut solution with the, the block sliding. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not going to try it, but uh, I figure I'd just mention it. So, um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, there are, are much like the original set, there are 100 levels in the set. And uh, I gotta say, this might be a longer Let's Play than the first one, just because it's, uh, it is a harder set, and there are a lot of levels that do take some time. Although, they're not quite, like, you know, ridiculous in terms of just how much of a commitment there is to solve them. Which is always nice. Alright, so what I need to do here is I need to go down to the blue button... And do that. Okay. I'm so used to not doing this solution, guys. Alright, there you go. Also, this was one of the first levels I optimized in the set, just because it was already in CCLP of 1, so I figured, why not? Alright, so what have we missed? We need to go back to the starting area, of course, to get the... Uh, we need to get these, too. But we need to go back to the suction area and get that chip over there, plus the fire area. So we got our work cut out for us. I think we, we know what we need to do here. This is one of those bolds that's a good example of you have to try everything as far as combinations of how you visit the rooms and take care of these gliders here at the start. And it, it's an interesting solution. Just going to say... And yes, it is indeed this way. Alright, we didn't have to actually do any waiting. That's nice. And what's also nice is being able to go to the exits. Yay! Pluto solved. Alright, hammered into place. Force floors can't push you through walls or anything else solid. Sometimes you can use this to get past them. And this is essentially a level that introduces the idea of nails. Um, which I think is a great idea. I think it's a cool concept, and I do appreciate a nice, simple lesson level, so to speak, for this idea. Um, and here we get a nice little, you have to climb the force floors maze. There's actually a level that we uh, were going to have in the set. Andrew made a level that was supposed to be late in the set called Ice Climbing. Now, it kind of had a similar idea behind it. And essentially what it was is it was just this very long, huge wall of down force floors, and you got like ice um, skates in the middle of it and you had to like land on ice in order to keep yourself steady and not really slide down any further kind of like actually using a pickaxe on ice 
So I thought it was a cool idea, but it was definitely very rigid as far as precision was concerned. Uh, so we eventually just removed it from the set. But I, I really like this level a lot. Okay, tool shed. Choose your tools wisely. One must be left behind. Um, so let's take a look around here. This is kind of like combinations from the original set, except a little easier to some degree. Um, in this room, we can use a few different combinations of items to get that, so we'll have to keep that in mind. We can either use a red, or excuse me, a yellow or a blue key for that. Um, for this room over here, we can use either flippers or fire boots. And in this case, we can use um, either, well, we can use any combination of keys and boots to get over there. Um, and then over here, we need to use... What, okay, I shouldn't say any combination for obvious reasons. Here we can use either skates or suction boots for that one. And here we absolutely must use a green key. Or, and uh, a and either a, a blue key or a yellow key. That came out horribly. So here's what we know. We absolutely must get the suction boots, which means that the skates are, in fact, uh, useless. Because we have to get a green key as well. So we, we now know which tool we're not going to use. So let, let's go ahead and head back to the start. And wow, I used just about the same amount of time as the bold route to um, just explore the level. So let, let's get the fire boots first, just because we can use the fire boots in conjunction with the suction boots and get two at once here on this next, uh, next go around. Which will definitely save some time, always nice. I really like this level a lot. I think it's a very well-made, you know, item swapping level, but it actually has some like some challenge in it. Like it's not just a pure item swapping level. It, it's it's got more to it than that. It was also one of the final levels developed for the set too, which is pretty cool. Oops, that's where right. I thought I had the skates. Oh man, and I don't know why I even went back through there since I don't need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the green and, uh, I guess, the yellow since we're already down here. Um, let's go ahead and head up here, get the red key. We still need to get the flippers in order to get to the upper right area. So, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do that since we're on this side. And I guess I could have just gone over here, but oh well. We got everything we needed up here. I think this is the most complex, um, or the most items necessary room. But we finally have access to the last area, in which we can get um, one more red key and a chip. And we will need that red key, by the way. So yeah, all in all, I enjoy this level. It was it was fun. It's 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 a great level. I wouldn't mind seeing this in CTLP four. And that's right, I, I, I will be talking about CCLP4 since that eventually will be a thing, and I do kind of want to call out some of the levels that I really, really want to see in there. I wouldn't say I really, really am eager to see this one in there. I would probably give it a 4, but this next level, I'm going to give a 5. Th this level is amazing. It's called Encased in Carbonite, and it's got a really cool concept. Um, the hint says you can't walk past monsters when there's only one space between them, like these bugs. So the level's telling you, yeah, you can't get in there, at least as this stands right now. And if you're a veteran player, you might think, oh, I need a block to get in there. But actually, not so. And I'll show you what I mean, because there are lots of extra chips in this level. But let's just go ahead and get everything around here first. So one of the things that I did um, while I was playtesting and optimizing this set is I actually watched some stuff on Netflix at the same time, or at least I kept some stuff playing in the background while I was optimizing this set. And I think I was watching uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt uh, while I was playing this. Alright, so here's the, the crux of this level. You go to this mirror alternate universe, and everything's frozen! Cool, right? I, I love this idea. It's, it's so awesome. And as a result, you can get to other things that you can get to in the other room, and you, you can't get to other things that you could get to in the other room. Uh, a good example being that green key. So you, you really couldn't get that in the first room. You had to go over here to grab it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I love this idea. It's, it's pretty cool. 
and it to me it feels like a a, a slightly different variation on what was done with Frozen in Time and CCLP one. Except in some ways I like this better because you actually do get to interact with moving monsters at one point. So I think it's cool. I, I really do. And we still got two chips left, so let's go ahead and head back here to the start. I think they're both in this area. Well, no, there's one down here, isn't there? Oops. Almost died there. I'm surprised we haven't had a death yet. At least I don't think we've had a death yet, have we? I'm trying to go back and think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we haven't had a death yet. I'm sure that's all going to change at some point. You know how these LPs go. But we made it to the exit, and we can now safely move on to... Boomerangs, level 8. Now, this is a level on which I might die, just because it is kind of a bit technical. It's got dodging in it, it's, it's pretty crazy, but it is a fun level to play. Uh, it's nice and open, it's got some cool, um, cool bits in it. Like this fireball section. And here you just have to be careful and not get hit by these fireballs as they're coming toward you. Which is just a matter of patience, you just want to make sure you don't do anything silly. And I think I was watching Star Trek when I was playing this level. I think I was watching Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. I had finished the original series and I decided to go through all the movies. I've been going through all of Star Trek just because I grew up around Star Trek but I never really watched it much and I kind of want to get into it now like I'm kind of curious so yeah I'm entering the world of being a Trekkie yay and it's fun I do enjoy Star Trek I think it is interesting I I, I think it's a cool show all right we are done with boomerangs moving on to another CCLP one level the very hungry caterpillar I'm gonna I, on this level I am gonna see if I can get the bold route Let's go ahead and just open that, because I think we need to open just one of the doors here. And I think I should have gone for that chip earlier instead of waited until now. Or wait, no, I, I think it's okay. Oops. That was silly. Boosting out of teleports is always weird. Like, I don't know, it, it always feels odd to me. Something that I can just never get used to, boosting out teleports. And here they come, oh boy. Woo! Okay, well we were four moves behind the optimal time, but we still got 59, so that's cool. And I think I'll end things off today with swap gates. Now, uh, as you may have noticed in the hint for level one, um, there was mention of secret hints in this set, which are going to come in handy for a later level, but there are actually very interesting objectives in their own right. So let's go ahead and see if we can try to get to the one for this level. Um, I'm just going to go nuts with pressing these. I, I'm not going to do any sort of rhyme or reason to any of this at all. I know there is a way to do it, and I actually did that for my optimized route. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to see if I can just do stuff over here. I feel like we didn't send nearly that amount. Alright, let's go ahead and explore this way. And there's the hint right there. We need suction boots to get to it, as you can see. Um, let's go up here, though. Oh, we didn't get the red key. Oh, come on. Seriously? I think that's one of those instances where you actually have to be super precise with everything. Oh, we did get this one. Let me just go back there and just account for what we missed. So I think we got everything else. I think. we Maybe not, but I think we did. Now because these two are not dependent on a tank, but that one is. Alright, so we're going to need to do some additional work here in order to make that happen. I'm not excited about that, but I'm excited about trying to get these suction boots, because this is kind of a bit tough. There you go. Not exactly terribly tough, but still kind of a little bit of a challenge. Alright, so let's do this here. Let's go ahead and guide a fireball this way. There you go. Perfect. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and head back to 
this area with the hints. Secret hint one, warp ZSHW, level 50 northwest, the, the teeth stares at it. And you'll find more about what that means as we, when we get to level 50, but for now, let's just focus on the tasks at hand. I'm actually going to try that warp password here in just a little bit, though. Let's go ahead and switch the tanks so that we can have uh, the other side get blown up. That just sounded really wrong. <laughs> uh... Alright, so let's go ahead and just go crazy with this again. Two. Three. Four. Okay, good. I think we got everything. I do appreciate that there are uh, water tiles there to collect fireballs after they've gone through the entire uh, circuit. That we guide them through because I mean if this whole area filled up this level would be so mean it, it would just it would just be crazy thankfully though it's not mean it, it's a very nice level and I do appreciate it it's it's a cool idea and in fact I think this level was originally level one during the sets development just because it had that first secret hint but then Andrew came up with the idea of putting uh, a sequel to the original sets level one all right well, I think that's we'll. Uh, I think that'll just about wrap it up for today. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and move on to bodyguards, which has the password OJBL. Aw, thanks for thinking of me, Andrew. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Um, Z S H W. Oh, okay. Elemental Park. Well, we'll get to that here next time. But until then, guys, thank you all so much for watching. It was fun to play the the set uh, and get it started. And I hope you guys have been enjoying yourself so far. If you have, be sure to hit that like button, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. So, again, thank you guys once again so much, and I will see you then.